Welcome to EPG Partshala. In today's module, we are going to discuss about primary and secondary air pollutants. Nature's equilibrium will be upset if any additional materials are added to environment, whether it is air, water or soil, and it creates an ecological disturbance in that environment. The presence of pollutants in air is not a new concept. We have heard about the episodes of London smog of 1952 acid rain after the Gulf War, these are some of the consequences of the air pollution. The air pollutants reduces the air quality and dispersed over the areas hundreds of miles from their sources. The proximity to the point sources of air pollution such as industrial sites and waste disposal sites make the communities living there at a higher risk of exposure to these pollutants, hence make many health hazards to them. In this module, we are going to discuss about the air pollution, its types and sources, formation of primary and secondary air pollutants through the natural and human activities, the harmful effects of air pollutants on the environment and other life forms, various methods of monitoring air pollutants and also the mitigation measures for combating with this air pollution. Let's see what is this air pollution. It means any solid, liquid or gaseous substance present in ambient air in such a concentration that may tend to be injurious to human beings or other living creatures, plant, property or enjoyment. Let's see how to classify these air pollutants. Pollutants that are directly emitted from the source are called primary pollutants. So one of the classification is primary and secondary and the primary pollutants, the examples are Sulfur dioxide, the sulfur dioxide emitted from the thermal power plant, nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide emission from the automobiles. When primary pollutants are emitted from the source, they undergo various physical processes and chemical reactions in the atmosphere and it forms secondary pollutant. For example, ozone and H2SO4 and HNO3 in the, forming the acid rain. Major sources of air pollutants, based on that, whether it is a natural or artificial, it can be classified as natural source pollutants and artificial source pollutant. The pollutants emitted in the atmosphere through natural source, example smoke and carbon monoxide from wildfires, volcanic activity that produce sulphur, chlorine and ash particulates. In the artificial source pollutants, these are mainly by the human activities and examples are NOx and SOx which are emitted from the vehicles and industries and based on the whether the source is stationary or mobile it can be of two type stationary source and mobile source. The sources of pollutants are fixed in a place then it is stationary source for that pollutant example thermal power plants, coal fired power plants that is most of the industries comes under this while the mobile source are those source of pollutants which are not fixed in a place and are mobile in nature. Example, automobiles on the highways, aircraft, farm vehicles, boats and ships, mainly the transportation sector. Different sources of primary and secondary air pollutants are described in this table. You can see that the sources are natural and anthropogenic, while the sink, sinks are chemical loads, dry deposition and wet deposition. In this flow chart, you can see that the primary pollutant are those which are emitted out and removed by the sinks are transportation or by the wet and dry deposition and by the chemical conversion and physical process this primary pollutant are converted to secondary pollutant and it sinks by the wet and dry deposition and by the transportation. Let's see what are the sources and sinks of sulphur dioxide in the air. Volcanoes are the natural source of sulphur dioxide. It emits about 67 percent of the total sulphur dioxide emitted in the atmosphere. About 33% of the total SO2 is emitted through anthropogenic influence. For example, fossil fuel combustion, smelting, manufacture of sulfuric acid, conversion of wood pulp to paper, incineration of refuse and production of elemental sulfur. While the sink is the conversion into H2SO4 in either gas or liquid phase. What are the sources and sinks of NOx in air, the oxides of nitrogen in the air? Although there are seven oxides of nitrogen known to occur, the only two are most important in the air pollution which are nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. 
the major sources the natural sources are volcanoes oceans biological decay lightning strikes etc man made sources are the fossil fuel combustion in the stationary sources for the power generation which accounts 24% and in the mobile sources for transport account 49% non combustion processes non combustion processes like nitric acid manufacture welding processes use of explosives are also sources for this while the sink is the conversion into hno3 in either gas or liquid phase sources and sinks of carbon monoxide in air natural sources include volcanic action electrical discharge during storms seed germination forest fires methane oxidation oxidation of non methane hydrocarbon decay of plant matter etc incomplete combustion and biomass burning are the man made sources while sinks include reaction with hydroxyl radical in the atmosphere it can also be removed by the soil microorganisms sources and sinks of ozone in air the main precursor of ozone in the atmosphere is no2 and various hydrocarbons from the vehicular emission in this equation no2 plus h nu produces no plus o and this o plus o2 plus m where m can be o2 or n2 of the air produce ozone plus m and sink of the ozone is it dissociation by nitric oxide sources and sinks of suspended particulate matter the sources are fossil fuel combustion mainly the diesel and coal and sink is by the dry deposition benzene has two sources indoor sources and outdoor sources the indoor sources include building materials and furniture attached garages heating and cooking systems stored solvents various human activities tobacco smoke etc while the outdoor sources are petrol stations and certain industries such as those concerned with coal oil and natural gas chemicals and steel sources of benzopyrene these are also called polyaromatic hydrocarbon and the natural sources are forest and brush fires volcanoes bacterial and algal synthesis petroleum seeps erosion of sedimentary rocks that contain petroleum hydrocarbons and the decomposition of vegetative litter fall while the anthropogenic sources include incomplete combustion such as incinerators and some industrial processes automotive emissions smoke from wood burning stoves jet air aircrafts exhaust cigarette and cigar smoke backyard herbaceous petroleum products spills sewage sludge creosote waste materials sources of ammonia is mainly the decay of organic matter in the reduced condition and also the ammonifiers the microorganisms ammonifying microorganisms also produce this ammonia while the anthropogenic emission of this ammonia are use of fertilizers improper waste disposal sites industrial processes catalytic converters in petrol cars landfill sites sewage works composting of organic material combustion wild mammals and birds sources of arsenic in the atmosphere arsenic exists as particulate matter mostly less than 2 micrometer in diameter volcanoes weathering of arsenic containing minerals and ores are the natural sources commercial or industrial processes such as since it is a by product of smelting process is the anthropogenic source sources of lead lead is commonly used in leaded petrol as anti knocking agent nowadays lead free petrol is available earlier it has lead in the uh, petrol as anti knocking agent so the use of it in petrol engine cause release into the air nickel in air is mainly in the particulate form with particle sizes ranging from 0.1 to 2 micrometer it has natural sources like soil dust forest fires particle released from the vegetation and sea salt anthropogenic sources are fossil fuel combustion high temperature metallurgical operations nickel primary production operations and municipal waste municipal waste incineration other sources are cork ovens cement manufacturing asbestos mining milling and cooling towers sinks of arsenic lead and nickel are the airborne particles eventually end up being precipitated with rainfall and therefore end up in water and soil formation of primary and secondary pollutants in the troposphere let's start with the carbon monoxide 
it is formed inside the automobile engine or in a thermal power plant when there is incomplete burning of fossil fuel that is burning of methane produces incomplete burning produces carbon monoxide if there is no excess or no sufficient oxygen is present then it will produce the carbon monoxide nitrogen dioxide it is classified as thermal nox and fuel nox air contains 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen during functioning of an automobile engine at very high temperature combustion takes place in which air fuel mixture is introduced at this very high temperature nitrogen present in the atmospheric air combines with oxygen and forms thermal nox fuel nox in gasoline nitrogen is present as impurity this nitrogen during combustion process combines with oxygen form fuel nox sulfur dioxide in coal 1 to 6% sulfur is present as impurity and when coal is burned in the presence of oxygen it forms sulfur dioxide lead earlier tetraethyl lead was used in petrol as anti knocking agent when leaded petrol is burned lead is released into the atmosphere ozone as we have discussed it is a secondary pollutant nox and volatile organic compounds are responsible for its production in the presence of sunlight pm10 that is particulate matter of 10 micrometer it may be solid liquid or gaseous pollutant benzene is produced during incomplete combustion or combustion of coal and oil in limited supply of oxygen benzopyrene the destructive distillation of coal into coke and coal tar or thermal cracking of petroleum residues into lighter hydrocarbons are pyrolytic processes which lead to its formation which lead to the formation of benzopyrene the temperature at which pyrogenic processes occur range from 300 degrees celsius to more than 1200 degrees celsius so we have seen the formation of primary and secondary pollutants now we will see smoke there are two types of smoke london type and los angeles type london type and los angeles type smokes then derive their name from the place they first appeared the major differences between them are explained in the table in london smoke it originates from the coal smoke combined with water vapor and liquid water in cool humid or foggy air while los angeles type smoke it is also called photochemical smoke it has been identified as coming from auto exhaust automobile exhaust source has been verified in 1931 by hagen smith if you see the components in london type smoke it, they are coal smoke containing the so2 and stagnant air with fog in la type smoke the auto exhaust containing carbon monoxide nox and reactive organic gases and the sunlight you can see the chemistry of london type smoke SO2 plus H2O vapor water vapor produces H2SO4 while in los angeles type smoke the reactants are nox plus reactive organic gases in presence of sunlight produces ozone plus NO2 in the london type smoke the primary pollutants are SO2 and water vapor and secondary pollutant is H2SO4 in la smoke the primary pollutants are carbon monoxide nox and rog while the secondary pollutants are ozone no2 and pan which is peroxy alkyl nitrate especially the peroxy acetyl nitrate the weather required for london smoke is humid foggy stagnant air while la type smoke occurs at hot sunny stagnant weather london type smoke appear like sooty dirty and foggy while in la type smoke it looks like hazy brownish in color let's see what is photochemical smoke and how it formed in the troposphere when oxides of nitrogen vos volatile organic compounds and sunlight come together they can initiate a complex set of reactions that produce a number of secondary pollutants which is known as photochemical smoke which is also known as photochemical oxidant so we can express the formation of photochemical smoke as VOCs plus NOx plus sunlight produce ozone. Ozone is the most abundant of photochemical oxidant. You can see the sequence of photochemical reaction as at a very high temperature inside the automobile engine 
formation of thermal NOx takes place from the reaction of atmospheric nitrogen and oxygen. That is N2 plus O2 at a higher temperature of 1200 to 1700 degrees Celsius, it produced 2NO. This nitric oxide thus emitted can oxidize to NO2. Thus, nitric oxide thus emitted can oxidize to NO2 using this oxygen. That is 2NO plus O2 gives 2NO2. If sunlight is available, a photon can decompose NO2 in a process called photolysis. So, NO2 plus H nu will give NO plus O. The free atomic oxygen can then combine with diatomic oxygen to form ozone. That is O plus O2 plus M gives ozone plus M, where M represents a molecule, it can be oxygen or nitrogen, whose presence is necessary to absorb excess energy from the reaction. The sink of ozone, we have already seen the dissociation of ozone by the NO. So, the ozone plus NO give NO2 plus O2. The general tendency for NO2 is to create ozone while NO tends to destroy ozone. This set of reaction create a cycle that is represented in the following figure. Acid drain or acid deposition. Angus Smith is the person who used the term acid drain at the, for the first time. It refers to different ways acid falls from the atmosphere including rain, fog, hail and snow. The more accurate term for the acid rain is acid deposition. There are two types of the acid deposition. One is dry deposition and the other is wet deposition. Dry deposition occurs close to the emission point that is mainly by the SO2 and NOx. Wet deposition which may occur thousands of kilometers away from the pollution sources in the form of sulphate or nitrate. Sulphur compounds are the principal cause of the acid deposition. Sources of acid precipitation. The natural sources. For SO2, the natural sources are oceans and volcanic eruption. For NOx, the natural sources are lightning, volcanic eruption and microbial activity. Man-made sources. For SO2, it is burning of coal or petroleum that is fossil fuel burning and the smelting of iron or other metallic ores. For NOx, it is steam from vehicle exhaust. It reacts with the nitrogen. The released SO2 and NOx react with water vapor and undergo other reactions and form acids. The reaction is as follows, SO2 plus water vapor plus ozone produces H2SO4. Sometimes SO2 plus H2O itself produces H2SO4, sulfuric acid. NO plus sunlight plus O2 produce NO2 plus various atmospheric gases that reacts with water vapor and produces HNO3. The normal rain is slightly acidic because it has carbon dioxide dissolves into it forming weak carbonic acid giving the resulting mixture a pH of approximately 5.6. While the acidic rain has a pH of about 4.3 or you can say that below 5.6. Now we will see what are the harmful effects of air pollutants on environment. First, the effect of carbon monoxide. At levels of carbon monoxide that occur in urban air, there are apparently no detrimental effects on materials or plants, but those levels can adversely affect human health. After entering the bloodstream through the lungs, carbon monoxide reacts with hemoglobin to convert oxyhemoglobin to carboxyhemoglobin. Carbon monoxide in fact has a greater affinity for the hemoglobin than the oxygen. So that even small amounts of carbon monoxide can seriously reduce the amount of oxygen conveyed throughout the body. With this bloodstream carrying less oxygen, brain function is affected and heart rate increases in an attempt to offset the oxygen deficit. It can even lead to death. Effect of sulphur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is one of the serious air pollutants which is responsible for smog formation. We have already seen that. When sulfur is entrained in an aerosol, it is possible for sulfur oxides to reach far deeper into the lungs. Atmospheric sulfur dioxide is harmful to plants and leaf tissue is killed on its exposure. Sulfurous pollutants can discolor, paint, corrode metals and cause organic fibers to weaken. Airborne sulfates significantly reduce visibility and discolor the atmosphere. Prolonged exposure to sulfates 
cause serious damage to buildings which are made up of marble, limestone or mortar as the carbonates of these materials are replaced by sulphates and these are water soluble. Effect of NOx, high concentration of NO2 can produce pulmonary edema. Nitrogen dioxide also causes extensive damage to plants through its secondary products such as peroxyacyl nitrate formed in smoke. Exposure of plants to several ppm of NO2 in the laboratory causes leaf spotting and breaking down of plant tissue. It also causes fading of dyes and inks used in some textiles. Much of the damage to materials caused by NOx are stress, corrosion cracking of electrical apparatus that comes from the secondary nitrates and nitric acid. Effect of photochemical smog includes eye irritation, chest constriction and irritation of the mucous membrane, cracking of rubber products and damage to vegetation. Effect of acid rain, direct phototoxicity to plants from excessive acid concentration in the air and indirect phytotoxicity such as from aluminium 3 plus liberated from acidified soil. It affects the respiratory systems in human and other animals. Acidification of water bodies has toxic effects especially to fish fingerlings. It corrodes the exposed structure, electrical relays, equipment and ornamental materials. The hydrogen ions from the acid rain dissolve the limestone and thus cause damage to marble structures. It causes reduction of visibility by sulphate aerosols. The sulphate aerosol also influences the physical and optical properties of clouds. Effect of benzene. On acute exposure, benzene may cause narcosis, headache, dizziness, drowsiness, confusion, tremors and loss of consciousness. It is a moderate eye irritant and a skin irritant. On chronic exposure, it may cause cancer in humans. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified benzene as carcinogenic to human and put it under group 1. It can lead to aplastic, anemia, chromosomal abrasions and mutations in human. Effect of benzopyrin. The benzopyrin exposure in humans leads to decreased immune function, cataracts, kidney and liver damage. Even it can cause jaundice, breathing problems, asthma-like symptoms and lung function abnormalities. The repeated contact with skin may induce redness and skin inflammation. Benzopyrin metabolites are mutagenic and highly carcinogenic. And it is also listed as group 1 carcinogens. Effect of ammonia. It can be taken up through the leaves via stomata, increasing the potential for nutrient nitrogen uptake which drive to the deleterious effects on terrestrial plants, effects epiphytic lichens, increase soil acidity and interfere with base cation uptake. Excess of it will lead to increased nitrification and denitrification, contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. In humans, on its exposure, it causes nose, throat irritation and burns, pulmonary edema, cough, asthma, lung fibrosis, skin burns, burning sensation in the eyes, ulceration, perforation of the cornea, blindness, cataracts, glaucoma. Effect of arsenic. Respiratory tract irritation, bronchitis, effect on nervous system and cardiovascular problem. In smelter workers exposed to arsenic dust, higher incidence of Raynaud's disease and increased constriction of blood vessels in response to cold are observed. Effect of lead. It affects nervous system, causes depression, mood changes, headache, diminished cognitive performances, diminished visual motor performance, dizziness, fatigue, forgetfulness, impaired concentration, increased nervousness, irritability, lethargy, reduced IQ scores and weakness. Effect of nickel. Nickel causes skin allergy leading to eczema and lichenification of the hands and other areas of the skin that contact nickel. Other health problems are asthma and conjunctivitis. Let's see what are the monitoring methods for these primary and secondary air pollutants. The Air Act 1981 provides means for the control and abatement of air pollution in India. National Ambient Air Quality Standards NACS, for major air pollutants were notified by the CPCB Central Pollution Control Board in April 1994. 
Given the ongoing focus of the AIR Act, most of the monitoring of emission concentrations and effects of air pollution has been directed towards the 12 criteria pollutants that is SO2, NOx, PM10, PM2.5, ozone, lead, carbon monoxide, ammonia, benzene, benzopyrene, arsenic and nickel. The methods for monitoring of these pollutants are for the particulate matter normally use high volume sampler. This analysis is based on gravimetric principle. A standard high volume sampler collects particles in the size range of 0.1 to 100 micrometer. The particulate concentration measured is referred to as total suspended particle that is TSP which is a combination of settleable particles and suspendable particles. It is expressed as microgram per cubic meter for a 24 hour period normally as a part of 6 day cycle. The other one is nephilometers. It uses the principle of scattering of light to measure the size and number of particles in the given air sample. It is normally used to examine the amount of particulate material in 0.1 to 2.5 micrometer size range. Generally this size range presents the greatest risk to human health. The carbon monoxide, it is measured by infrared spectrophotometry. It is based on the principle that carbon monoxide strongly absorbs infrared radiation at certain wavelengths. When IR radiation is passed through a long cell that is about 100 centimeter containing a trace of carbon monoxide, part of the energy is absorbed by the gas. A non-dispersive infrared that is NDIR device suitable for the detection from 0 to 500 ppm by volume of carbon monoxide is used. Another method is gas chromatography. If you want to measure carbon monoxide of 10 ppm or lower, you can use the gas chromatography with a flame ionization detector that is FID. The sample is subjected to catalytic reduction by H2 over a nickel catalyst at 360 degrees Celsius and measured with an FID. NOx, oxides of nitrogen is measured mainly by the chemiluminescence method. It is the standard method for NOx analysis which is based on the interaction with ozone to yield the electronically excited NO2 molecule in photomultiplier tube which emits radiation in the range of 600 to 3000 nanometer. The output of photomultiplier tube is proportional to the concentration of ENO. Another method is Jacob Conscier that is sodium arsenide method. NOx is collected over NaOH solution. The NO2 produced is allowed to react with H3PO4 that is phosphoric acid, sulfanyl amide and N1 naphthyl ethylene diamine dihydrochloride. The resulting reddish purple azo dye is measured at 543 nanometer. This method is applicable to 0.01 to 1.5 microgram NO2 per ml. Sulfur dioxide, it is measured by modified WESGK spectrophotometric method. It is a standard method for monitoring 0 0.0005 to 5 ppm SO2 in the ambient air. SO2 is collected in scrubbing solution which contain mercury chloride. SO2 is collected in the scrubbing solution containing HgCl4, HgCl2 plus KCl which has a collection efficiency of around 95%. The solution is allowed to react with formaldehyde and then with the pararosaniline hydrochloride. The absorbance of the product red violet dye is measured at 548 nanometer. Ozone measurement is mainly by the UV photo method. The UV photometer determines the concentration of ozone in a sample gas at ambient pressure by detecting the absorption of UV radiation in a glass absorption tube. Ozone shows strong absorption of UV light at 254 nanometer. The analyzer uses the beer lambert relationship to calculate the ozone concentration. Ozone can also be measured by the chemical method where the air containing ozone is drawn through a midjet impinger containing 10 ml of 1% sodium iodide in a neutral buffer composed of 0.1 molar disodium hydrogen phosphate and 0.1 molar potassium dihydrogen phosphate. The iodine liberated in the absorbing reagent is determined spectrophotometrically at 352 nanometer and the range extends from 0 0.01 ppm to about 10 ppm. Ammonia is measured by the endophenol blue method. Ammonia in the atmosphere is collected by bubbling of measured amount of air through a dilute solution of sulfuric acid to form ammonium sulfate. 
The ammonium sulfate formed in the sample is analyzed colorimetrically by the reaction with phenol and alkaline sodium hypochlorite to produce endophenols. Sodium nitroprusside accelerates the reaction as a catalyst and the limit of detection of this analysis is 0 0.02 micro point the limit the limit of detection of the analysis is 0 0.02 microgram ammonia per ml. Benzene is measured by the adsorption and desorption which is followed by gas chromatography. A known volume of air is drawn through a charcoal tube to trap the organic vapors which is present. The charcoal in the tube is transferred to a small graduated test tube and dissolved with the carbon disulfide. An aliquot of dissolved sample is injected into a gas chromatograph. The area of the resulting peak is determined and compared with areas obtained from the injection of standards and gas chromatograph with a FID is used in this study. Benzopyrene is measured by the solvent extraction followed by the Benzopyrene is measured by HPLC or GC. It involves collection of air particulate on a fine particulate filter using high volume sampler for total suspended particulate matter or respirable dust sampler for respirable suspended particulate matter. Metals like lead, arsenic and nickel are associated mainly with the particulate matter and therefore collected on EPM 2000 cellulose membrane filter paper by any dust collecting device. The dust collecting area of the filter is calculated then. This filter is then digested with digestion mixture at digestion mixture. Digestion samples are filtered through the Wattman filter paper and volume made up to 25 ml with double distilled water and analyzed by double AS. Mitigation measures for combating air pollution. The atmosphere cleanses itself by the dispersion, gravitational settling, flocculation, absorption, rain washout, etc. However, source control of contaminants is more desirable for combating with the air pollution problem. Some measures that can be adopted in source control are using the unleaded petrol, using fuels with low sulfur and ash content, encouraging people to use public transport, planting trees along the busy streets, industries and waste disposal sites should be situated outside the city, catalytic converter usage. The control measures at the industrial centers are Emission rates should be restricted to the permissible levels. Incorporation of air pollution control equipment in design of planned layout should be mandatory. Fuel switching, this include use of low sulfur coal for the combustion at thermal power plants. It may help in reducing emission of SO2. Use of compressed natural gas or liquefied natural gas in motor vehicles and cooking stoves. Reduce use of fossil fuel and use of non-conventional energy sources like solar energy, wind and tidal, etc. You can use equipments to control the air pollution. Ensuring the sufficient supply of oxygen to the combustion chamber and adequate temperature so that the combustion is complete, thereby eliminating much of the smoke. Use of mechanical devices post-combustion in the industries to remove the pollutants such as wet and dry scrubbers for the flue gas desulfurization. Centrifugal cyclones, backhouse collector, electrostatic precipitators, wind jury scrubbers, etc. For the gas pollutants, plate column, packed column, and spray column can be used. The air pollutants collected must be carefully disposed. The factory fumes are dealt with the chemical treatment. So, to conclude, we have seen that air pollutants are of two types primary and secondary, based on their mode of formation. Primary pollutants are directly emitted from the source. When these pollutants undergo various physical processes and chemical reactions in the atmosphere, it forms the secondary pollutants. And based on the source, these are these pollutants, air pollutants are natural, artificial, stationary, and mobile. And we have also seen what is acid rain, London type, and Los Angeles type smokes, which are the secondary pollutants. Then we have seen that these air pollutants are harmful to the environment and it, these are detrimental on human health plants and other building infrastructures and national ambient air quality standards for the major air pollutants were notified by the central pollution control board and they have directed 12 criteria pollutants and we have seen different monitoring methods for the various air pollutants primary as well as secondary pollutants thank you